Thank you. It's a, it's a hard pressure now following up uh, that speech. That was amazing. Um, I think we should remember why we are here. It's because we want athletes to be able to take out their full potential in their sport. And of course, we, we want the best athletes to win. Is that correct? And it, it has a lot to do with exercise. And um, I'm going to give you a lecture in exercise physiology. Is that OK? Please raise up. Up. Uh, it's many reasons why we do this. And then I want you to stand in a very strong position. Close your eyes and think about something you really love and you're really good at. Oh, sit down. Please sit down. You can open your eyes again. But then try, try to sit good, breathe well. Use your whole system to breathe. Do you feel better now? Yes. At, at least I got your attention. Um, but it was not only a joke, because what I did now, you could, could have taken a pill for it. Could have gotten the same effect. But exercise is good for you. So in such conferences, always make sure people stand up and sit down more often. We, we, we shouldn't sit so much. Uh, but it also tells us how we can manipulate our physiology by doing the right things. So um, I want to talk about that today. We heard some sad stories. Today, I would say, um, is it possible to win medals without doping? Raise your hands, those of you who believe that. Almost all of you. That's really great. Because I, I think that's a, a very important issue. And that's what I want to highlight, because uh, I think many groups of athletes don't think so. They don't think they can win without doping. And they probably don't have the knowledge on how to optimize their performance without doping. And that's really sad. Because it sits a lot of medal winners here today who fight for clean sports, who obviously did the right things. And they did it on a knowledge-based approach. So I think that's, um, that's an important issue. The human body is unique. It's a unique possibility to adapt to exercise. And I think creating cultures where that is in focus is very important. And I, what I will talk about today in my exercise physiology lecture is not about exercise physiology, but it's just going back to the athletes, what they have to do so we can create systems where athletes can take out their full potential and where we can uh, implement knowledge, not only about how they improve performance, but about anti-doping, about ethics, and we can also have transparency in the systems. So it's very difficult to cheat. And I think that is very related. And I, and I hope you think so after my lecture. Um, this is what we, how we do it in Norwegian uh, Olympic Committee. We say we should focus, everything we do should enhance the training quality, the daily quality, what you do every day. It should improve the relations in the team, not only to have a good time, but that it really enhances performance and it motivates you to do it over a long time. And then we focus on, of course, the obvious performance optimization aspects. And I think these are the key factors. Everyone knows you need to do the right thing. You need to make your puzzle in order to optimize your training content. When I go into groups who don't succeed, they have less focus on training quality and how they can optimize that. And often also less focus on recovery and what really enhances their recovery. But more importantly, this needs to be done in a way that we, when you can sustain motivation to continuously optimize these factors over time. You need to go into the learning cycle and be there for 10 years, 15 years, before you take out your full potential. And this is, this is exercise physiology, and I love it. Uh, I won't spend much time on it, but it's, it's quite, of, quite important because this is what doping can manipulate. You can hurt yourself more, but still recover and get an uh, adaptation from it. But then I think it's one thing that you often miss 
in such environments that had that focus is that it's a really fine-tuned system. If you can find a sweet spot where you hurt yourself enough, it's kind of like fatiguing yourself, um, but not so much as you get injured or sick, but you find that sweet spot, it's sufficient overload to get an over overcompensation, to really get a good adaptation, but not to get injured. And that's a quite a fine line there. And it needs, it's continuously changes. So you need to every day find that sweet spot. It's not very easy. And of course you need to optimize that to the specific sport. And not only, you, if I love cross-country skiing though, and I, but you can't do cross-country skiing races every day, is to take out each of the component and overload them, put that into a puzzle that you continuously adapt and change until the athletes have taken out their full potential. And it needs to be individually matched. Everyone has their own unique history. Everyone has their own unique genetic um, disposal. And of course, everyone has a different brain. You shouldn't forget that. So it's, it's um, that unique matching to each individual athlete at the right stage of their career is highly important. And of course, you need to prevent injuries and health. And that is not just by doing recovery. I say train harder and tra but train smarter. Because you need to tolerate a lot. And the prevention work is of poor, Im important. And of course, you need passion. Passion drives motivation. How do you work with passion? And what has that to do with physiology? If you don't have it, you don't have the possibility to stimulate uh, athletes to take out their full potential to be in that learning cycle every day and still enjoy it. To grow passion is extremely important also for a physiologist. And then I say, you need to develop attitude. What do I mean about that? We know that how you behave stimulates your hormonal responses a lot. And just to use one example, those who, who, who dope with um, or have done research on testosterone, they say that mostly it stimulates your brain. And that can also be done by behavior. And I think it's a large potential to changing behavior of athletes, having the right attitude in a single session, but also driven by passion over a long-term scale. Of course, this, this is just the factors that influence. But how do we do this? How, how do we create these environments? That's, of course, the, the important um, factor. How do we drive athletes into these performance uh, circles? that they have to sustain for, to continuously debrief, learn, recover better, plan better, prepare, and then of course optimize their training and recovery uh, and their performance. We start with the athletes. Kind of the athlete empowerment is the most important in my opinion. They need to take ownership and we need to develop and optimize the use of self-regulation of the athletes. That needs to be in the system, so they always are conscious themselves. What are my goals today? How do I feel today? What, what is the right thing to do? So they can be fully 100% in the moment while doing their work. If you think, you actually lose focus. You can't be in the moment and think. That's two different parts of your brain. And then, of course, debrief. You can learn from it. But if, if this should be done in a good way, you need a good coach. But the coach needs to be there needs to learn together with athletes, and you need to optimize the coach-athlete interface. So can coach education is maybe one of the most important factors to make sure of. And then you, can, you should not only focus about uh, kind of physiology and biomechanics, but also the ethics. That is an important part of, it's not only about how good you get, but how do you get so good. And then I think the team is a highly important and very underestimated uh, factor. If you put together complementary skills, you drive innovation, and you have fun. And I think if you have fun, at least that's what we see in Norwegian sports, if you want to increase the load in the teams, and we need to have higher load to optimize our performance, start by working with the team, working with the group. They should also have fun because then they're able to tolerate that amount of, of, um, of, of training. But it also allows us to have a transparency. It allows us to have a system where we have knowledge transfer within sports, between athletes, 
and between sports, at least within a nation. Uh, and I think that's some of the very good thing with the um, Olympia Toppen system in Norway, because with that insight, you can implement a very good ethical work, you uh, can implement anti-doping work, uh, but you also have insights, and the medical doctors can actually go between sports, and they are not paid to be in one sport or get at least not bonuses for it, which is very important, I think. And then, of course, today we can get information from everything, and that will surround us now today. It will probably be kind of the new doping. <laughs> How can we take good decisions based on information? But I think it's also a very trap that you can go into, that you try to do all the right things and you get kind of confused in all that information. And then to get the information into decision support and have that only answer and one focus at one time is a future um, a very important aspect. So of course there are no secrets to success. It will not be in the future either. Uh, and it's a re result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. But not only hard work. It should be driven by passion. It should be driven by, by teamwork, smartness, and of course fun. Because athletes are also not only athletes, but humans. And if we want to kind of make a sustainable system, where athletes take out their full potential, I think we need to respect them as humans, we need to take care of them as humans, and we need to build their 15 year of performance optimization systems so they can take out their full potential, but we can also um, include uh, good ethics in their everyday work. Thank you. <laughs>